He wants me to big boot a 74 year old lady. So, which Chavo's just ribbing Eddie. They literally stand up like they're going to fight. And I'm, I'm backstage with two brothers about to fight. I'm going, what do I do now? <laughs> you know, I You're obviously someone that has an incredible amount of knowledge and wisdom. And you've mentioned before that, you know, physicality, your time in the ring is done, but you wouldn't be against, you know, working with some of the younger guys, helping them on in the promos and as a manager. Is there anyone in the WWE roster just now that you look at and you go, I'd really like to work with them as a manager or someone that you think you would be a really good pairing with? Yeah, and you, and you always got to be careful. You know, I always, when people ask me, how would you do this or how would you do that? And, and I'll, my answer is always, I don't know. This is how I would do it. And, you know, you try to inject what you would do into somebody else, and sometimes you just screw them up. And they try to do what you were doing, and they can't. They got to make it themselves. That's the one great thing about Fit Finley was when he trained people, he trained people. He didn't train them cookie cutter. He would figure out what your strengths and weaknesses are and tailor his training to you. And so I don't give a ton of advice. People ask, I always give advice. I always say, this is what I would do. I love Baron Corbin. I think Baron Corbin's a really smart guy. And I think Baron Corbin, you know, is a guy I would, you know, we talk about guys you would manage. The problem is I have is I'm kind of like uh, Colonel Parker. I'm tall. And so I can't manage a lot of people because I'm 6'6". Six, six, and you don't want a manager that's bigger than the, the, the wrestler. And so I'm, I'm limited in who I can manage because of the size. I think Baron Corbin's a great show. I think there's a little bit of the, with the evolution of the happy Corbin character and uh, all that. I think there's a little bit of JBL in there. I think looking at the way he is on the mic and, you know, the, the way he is in ring, I think there's a little bit of JBL there. So I think that's a, a great pairing that I would at least love to see. Um, you've had some incredible high points in your career. You talked about sort of the pinnacle being that match with Cena. You, you've had, obviously, the four corners matches as well and just achieved pretty much everything there is to achieve. Is there one thing in your career that stands out as like a particular regret or a missed opportunity that if you could go back and do it all again is maybe the one thing you'd want to do different? Yeah, I wish I'd have got the, the championship run younger. You know, I, I don't want to cut my APA time off, uh, but, you know, I wasn't ready when I came into the WWE for a big time run. I thought I was, but I was overwhelmed by the system. And, you know, because you're a champion in different places and you've been successful in places you've been, you think you can go up to the big stage and you're automatically going to be a, a champion and be successful. And it doesn't work that way. You know, it, it's, it's a, it's still a progression. You know, very rarely do guys who are great college athletes go into the pros and automatically right away become as good as they are comparatively in the pros as they were in, in college. And I had that run and right when I kind of figured the business out, my body gave out on me. And that's the only regret I have. You know, it, if, you, if you go back and look and say, I have regrets about this or I'd change this, it's like a, a, a chessboard. If you change one thing, it changes the, everything. And so, I, you know, I'm happy where I am now. I'm happy with the career. But if I could have had another couple of years there when I kind of figured out the business, if my body hadn't given out, I, I would have really enjoyed that. That's perfect. And we're going to let you go because we know you're a best guy. But before we go, I would, you know, we mentioned being a big fan of the podcast. We'd love if you've got, one Eddie Guerrero, or even just a little one you could share with us just now, because he's a personal favorite of mine. He's a personal favorite of everyone here inside the ropes. I think he's probably one of the most universally beloved wrestlers of all time. So the, the floor is yours. And after that, I'll let you plug anything you want to plug in. We can let you get on with your busy day. You know, it's amazing with Eddie. Uh, he's, you know, he was a groomsman at my wedding and I was, did part of his eulogy. We were really close friends, <laughs> but the, the legacy of Eddie, people remember Eddie like it was yesterday. And that shows you how great a person and, and a character he was and how, how much people just loved Eddie Guerrero. And he was the right guy for me <laughs> without Eddie JBL would have never happened. A funny story I've told a, a few times was when he and his brother Chavo came up with the heart attack angle for his mother, <laughs> then they were, we were backstage and they knew that JBL character wasn't getting over. We need something big to happen. And Chavo and Eddie pitched the idea to me. I thought it was magnificent. And then Chavo realizes Eddie's getting a little worked up. <laughs> so just like typical brothers, Chavo starts telling Eddie, he goes, how about then John hits mom with the clothesline? And Eddie looks at me, he goes, Chavo, mom's, I don't care what she was, 74 years old. He's not hitting her with a clothesline. And then, then Chavo's got to be, he goes, and then mom gets a little color. And Eddie now, it's, they're about to fight. He goes, okay, 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 okay. How about John just hits her mom with a big boot? He wants me to big boot a 74-year-old lady. So, which Chavo's just ribbing Eddie. 
they literally stand up like they're going to fight. And I'm, I'm backstage with two brothers about to fight. I'm going, what do I do now? <laughs> you know, I just, and finally, uh, Eddie kind of backed off. Eddie knew Chavo was stirring him up, but Eddie still got mad at his own brother because only brothers can get brothers that mad. <laughs>